Hello, dear friends, and welcome to IVMED webinars. This is the series of educational webinars held by fertility specialists of Medical Center IVMED and specialists of Medical, uh, oh, sorry, of uh, IVMED family IVF and surrogacy agency. We are located in Kiev. Um, my name is Nadia Milinevska. I am a head of international department and I'm a director of Ivy, Ivy Med Family Agency. Um, today we have a very special webinar and um, uh, I would like to introduce the topic of this webinar. I just want to remind you that we have active chat. You can write your questions and after presentation of our speaker, you can ask um, any question to different specialists and uh, receive the answer. Uh, the topic of webinar is uh, embryo embryo Embryology Laboratory, Standards of Cryo Storage um, Work Arrangement at Medical Center Ivy Med. Today we will discuss, um, according to multiple requests from our patients, the next uh, issues. What is a cryobank? How the cry storage of embryos and other biomaterial is organized at IVMED? IVF ID witness system for identification of patient and his or her biomaterial. Biomaterial collection and cryopreservation. The control of cry storage safety at IVMED. And I would like to introduce our main speaker. Birol Aydin, uh, Director of IVF Laboratory at Medical Center IVMED, Senior Embryologist, uh, Official Expert of Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology. Medical Center uh, IVMED is proud to have him uh, in, his in our team. Uh, we have uh, today a very special um, way of representing uh, our webinar and uh, today, uh, the whole embryo embryology team uh, is ready to give also answers for uh, your questions. And um, we would like to introduce you also um, fertility specialist Veronika Ulanova. Uh, she is a medical doctor, obstetrician gynecologist, fertility specialist, doctor of the highest category. She is co-founder of Medical Center Ivy Med. So after presentation, you will be able to ask you any question from any area uh, to our specialist. And now, Let's start. Uh, Birol, please. Hi, everyone. Welcome to IVMED Embryology Laboratory. Today, we will try a different concept of webinar. So we are directly connected from our laboratory. You will be able to see our system, advanced technologies, and you will meet with our teams for your question and answer. First of all, I want to give information, technical information about uh, IVMED Clinic Embryology Laboratory, so how our laboratory is working. Uh, actually, we try to manage our laboratory with advanced technology for the special air quality standards, special equipment quality, uh, and also for security systems of the laboratory. Uh, I will try to introduce our laboratory, so we are basically using to microstation, which we are uh, which we are able to do fertilization, uh, assisted teaching by the laser system, uh, embryo determination, and also uh, embryo culture follow up uh, through the process for the quality and the assessment. Also, we have special bench top incubators, which give us possibility to follow your embryos and biological material during the cultivation. So the difference of the technology, it's allowed only one patient in one well. So when we open the lab, so we don't give damage to quality of culture to other embryos or other patients. Also we use special laminar cabin. So it is already 100% under sterilization uh, condition. There is no particles, there is no any kind of uh, bacteria, infection, or pathogens which can survive inside. 
So all manipulation for the embryos and oocyte culture is doing under laminar flow cavity. So we are protecting all this system, as you see many different tablets on the wall. So all of them is making quality management for the incubators, for the laboratory, and for the air quality. We can be able to measure 24 hours pH standards in the culture dish, how it's developing. We can measure for each well temperature also. Also, we can measure different particle levels, pressure and humidity. And we are able even from our phone, from our phone application to follow the patient which we have in incubator. Also, we have Pandex technology which, which help us 24 hours and six day of culture to follow up as the time-lapse dynamic video of the embryo and oocyte. So while we have uh, your biological material as oocyte and embryo inside of time-lapse, we are able already to see how embryo developing. So when embryo start to get fertilized and to get 27 hours, it gives us big potential for the implantation of embryos. We choose high quality of embryos by the time lapse. Time lapse give us main point which embryo is the able and more, it can give more chance for the pregnancy and, the, and also implantation. So now I will try to give some tricky information about our uh, biological safety witness system. So we create for you a scenario, a patient, how we are going from the function till embryo transfer with witness system. Now we will visit our operation room and we will try to see how we proceed this system. So as you see from each uh, panels, we have special card reader, which is connected to the main screen. When we, when, we read, when we have the patient or surrogate for the embryo transfer, each surrogate or patient has side crosslet. And when we read this smart chip, which you see inside, already we found information of patient, donor or surrogate, and also dynamic picture of the embryos for the embryo transfer. So when we go to, uh, for the embryo transfer to our Embryologist, so our embryologist will show how the system is going on. So special chip reader can read the chip, which is your culture dish for the embryo transfer, and she can determine the real patient. If she read by the mistake a different patient, the system will not allow to make embryo transfer. Now she will try to read the wrong chip, and the system will not give permission to do embryo transfer. So when we when she try to read the right chip, then system proceed the embryo transfer and patient can follow this embryo transfer on the main screen. Can see about embryo picture and the quality of the embryo transfer. While the same situation it happens for the function. So if we do a function for the donor programs, when donor comes inside of our operation room, so when we read the chip, all donor information is coming directly to our screen. So name of doctor, possible number of follicles, and all information about donor can be seen on the main screen. Then when we move the embryologist, embryologist proceed, all site pickup process by the witness technology. So each step, she reads smart chip, and how many eggs she found, patient, and also doctors can see real time on the main screen. When function ended, when function ended, she already made a culture chip in each petri dish. So for the witness process, each culture dish includes a smart chip. So in this case, there is no chance to mix up any kind of biological material. So when she signed the petri dish and the put chip, 
Then we are going for next process to our embryology room for tumorous complex screening, as we are calling standardization. Our embryology starts to make a denudation process. So she will dip chip head on the culture dish and she proceeds denudation. When denudation complete, we are already ready for the ICSI fertilization process. She will complete the denudation. Denudation complete. After the denudation complete, we will test the XC process. So now we are going to test XC process. So in the same station, same station will be in the XC process. So each process, we will read the smart chip by the each culture dish and each embryologist for the special process will proceed the system. So when we come here, system will ask uh, also send a sample to read, and then we will proceed all system to finish with the culture dish. So if we are doing same things for the cryopreservation, so now we will visit our vitrification cryopreservation room. So we have also for each cryo spe special RFID chip which follow up, which include all information of patient. When I read the sperm, when I read the special chip, so when I see the cryo, I already will see the potential of the embryos. So when I read the chip, already I will prove the name of patient and there will not be chance for the mix up of the materials. So as you see all the process, in embryology laboratory, we are trying to do understand security programs. So there is no risk to mix up the mix up of the material. There is no risk risk any kind of culture problems during the process. Actually, uh, as a patient, you are only uh, choosing the clinic, so you don't know the clinic behind what kind of laboratory they have. Most of the clinic has very beautiful buildings. Uh, but they don't have enough invest in the laboratory, enough technology in the laboratory. That's why we try to share with you under transparency all condition of our laboratory, how advanced technology we have, how quality management we have. So now we are ready for your questions and we will be glad for each embryologist in our team to give answers to you. So dear Nadia, we can test the questions. Thank you. Uh, we have questions. Uh, hello. Thank you for the webinar. I have already uh, five IVF trials uh, before and I never had blastocyst for embryo transfer. What can be the reason for that? Uh, do I have any advanced te uh, technique which will help me? Do you okay. have? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, when we have problem on the uh, embryo stuff, on the step, especially on, on the cleavage stage or five day of last stage, stage, of course, uh, there can be a lot of different factors. So genetical factors, culture factors, laboratory factors, also, of course, ex embryologist factors. So uh, in this case, it is difficult to determine this question uh, by the genetic test because there is no blastocyst which we can take biopsy material. But of course, with special culture techniques, we can use advanced technology of the time lapse. We can determine why this embryo stop and which stage stop. We can check sperm sample male factor with uh, sperm fish testing. So there are different kinds of way how we can find out why this embryo is not developing. But still, if there is question about developing, we have to uh, advise to our patient that there are two ways. First way is egg donation process. And second way, if she doesn't want to do egg donation, uh, mitochondrial spindle transfer or pronuclear transfer. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, how uh, how you do oocyte pickup and embryo transfer safety during COVID nineteen? I can answer this question because actually our embryological uh, laboratory is the safest place I think in Ukraine now for sure because uh, even usually not during pandemic uh, we always do all disinfection after every case like all surfaces are cleaning this embryo and the all side safe uh, disinfectants also we work in just in the safe laminar box they have special airflow that prohibit uh, contamination with any bacteria or viruses inside our culture dish uh, and uh, like biological material we always work just with uh, sterilized plastic one use plastic like uh, always really safe uh, during the pandemic we restrict the number of cases so it was not so crowded and we do not have like too much patience so we are ready for any troubles and like pandemic situation thank you um i also have a question to doctor uh, a good embryo uh, 5 aa was transferred to me but it did not implant uh, what could be the problem uh, nadia translator please uh, translate question doctor у меня был перенос эмбриона хорошего эмбриона 5 аа но он не имплантировался в чем может быть проблема Здравствуйте. Может быть несколько проблем, которые привели к тому, что отсутствовала имплантация при переносе хорошего эмбриона. There actually might be several reasons that could influence the failure of implantation uh, when the good embryo was transferred. Первая проблема возможная – это изменения в иммунном статусе. The first possible uh, reason is the uh, changes in the immunological state of the person. Для того, чтобы понять, нет ли этой причины, надо обследоваться на предмет наличия антифосфолипидных антител. In order to exclude this reason for infertility, uh, you should be investigated for the presence of the anti uh, phospholipid antibodies. И повышение активности uh, натуральных киллеров and the increased activity of the natural killers. При наличии антифосфолипидных антител проблема заключается в том, что в итоге это реализуется микротромбозом, в том числе и сосудов эндометрия, в результате чего в него хуже происходит имплантация. Это снижает вероятность наступления беременности даже при переносе хорошего эмбриона. In the case of uh, antiphospholipid antibodies, the reason for infertility can be the uh, microthrombosis, which decreases the probability of uh, occurrence of the pregnancy. Если повышена активность натуральных киллеров, то есть макрофагов, клеток иммунной системы, if we are considering if the reason is the uh, activity of the natural killers, uh, macrophages, Это приводит к тому, что они считывают плодное яйцо как чужеродное, также препятствуя его имплантации. They uh, believe that the uh, fruitful egg is the, uh, out, the outside body, so they uh, prevent it from the, from the implantation. Наличие такой проблемы требует параллельной протоколе эко-иммунологической коррекции, что повысит вероятность наступления беременности. If you have such a problem, then uh, the most reasonable solution would be to run the IVF procedure along with the immunological treatment. Then the chances would be higher of getting... Вторая, вторая возможная причина – это изменения в эндометрии. The second possible reason are the changes in the endometrium itself. Которые могут приводить к снижению его рецептивности, способности понять, что это плодное яйцо, его захватывать и втаскивать внутрь себя. This can lead to the decrease in the receptivity of the endometrium, so uh, the endometrium doesn't recognize the fruitful egg, and it doesn't um, attract the fruitful egg to itself, and it prevents implantation. 
Для того, чтобы исключить эту проблему, нужно сделать такое исследование, которое называется иммуногистохимия эндометрия. To exclude this reason, uh, you need to do a special examination, which is called immunohistochemical uh, examination. Это исследование позволяет исключить такой статус эндометрия, который называется метандометрит, который, в свою очередь, приводит к снижению этой самой рецептивности. In this case, we can exclude the condition of uh, metaendometritis, which uh, will exclude one of the reasons for your possible reasons of infertility. Если выявлена эта причина, это требует терапии, терапия противовоспалительная назначается, и контрольной иммуногистохимии, и при пролеченном метандометрите опять-таки повышается вероятность наступления беременности. If this is a reason, uh, it requires additional therapy, and at the end of this therapy, uh, the, this stage should be checked again by the method of uh, chemical hysteroscopy. Также приводить к тому, что отсутствует имплантация, могут определенные изменения системы свертывания крови. Another reason for infertility could be the, uh, diff the changes in the coagulation system. Для того, чтобы их исключить, делается исследование, которое называется гемостазиограмма. In this case, you should do the hemostasiogram to make sure that this is not the reason why you are infertile. Если выявлены изменения в системе свертывания крови, они подлежат коррекции, и при параллельной коррекции также повышается вероятность наступления беременности. If this is the reason for infertility, then uh, they, uh, this uh, situation can be helped by a treatment, and it should be performed along with the IVF attempt. Вот это те причины, которые могут приводить к отсутствию имплантации хорошего качества эмбриона. These are the reasons that may prevent the implantation of the uh, embryo of a good quality. Thank you. And uh, it seems we have a question to embryological team. Uh, why do embryos stop growing after day three? Uh, sperm and or egg factor. Hello, my name is Olga and I will try to answer it uh, in simple words. To be fair, both eggs and sperm may be the reason why embryos stop their development after day three of culture. And the major problem in this situation is uh, uh, chromosomal abnormalities. Usually oocytes uh, more often possess uh, chromosomal abnormalities, but at the same time, uh, the spermatozoa is one who actually uh, controls uh, the Uh, dividing of chromosomes in embryo. So both of them may be the fault when we talk about genetics and also the additional cause, the energetic cause. Well, unfortunately goes only to oocytes because mitochondria, the uh, energetic system of uh, the cells of embryo, they are uh, actually uh, got from oocytes. So unfortunately, Uh, we are not able to say who is the fault in each particular case, but still can find ways to compensate this problem anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I have low quality of eggs still, can I freeze them? Maybe also to embryologist. Okay, everybody fine. My name is Maxime. I'm a embryologist in IMED clinic. Okay, if you have a uh, low quality of eggs, so uh, embryologists can choose like two options, or it's freeze or not to freeze. Uh, if you choose uh, freeze this eggs, so this embryology must have good experience and uh, good media. In IVMED clinic, we have the both. Uh, if embryologists choose do not freeze, so uh, he think this uh, eggs will not survive after towing. Uh, If you have like this situation, you can ask your doctor or uh, directly uh, embryologist and they can uh, uh, in details explain why they choose like this option. Thank you. I had three IVF cycles with third day embryo transfer. Uh, what do you, uh, what you prefer for embryo transfer, third day or fifth day? Who wants? Maybe doctor uh, or, or 
basically, yes, basically <laughs> as embryologists, uh, we always prefer day five transfers because this uh, helps us to uh, understand whether embryos of this particular patient are able to reach the blastocyst stage that is very important for implantation. Because only blastocysts can go into uterus and give a pregnancy. So if embryo stops on day three, well, we have no chance to get pregnancy at all. That's why we prefer to uh, have prolonged culture of embryos to be sure that they have high implantation chances, to be sure that they form blastocysts. We also can prefer perform genetic testing at this stage, at blastocyst stage. That's why it's always better to go for blastocyst. But if you have only one embryo, for example, or two embryos, and we are not able to select out of them because there's only one or two, we can go for these three transfers. But of course, if you already uh, had such an experience, it is better to switch to blastocyst culture now and to look whether your embryos are able to go for blastocyst at final stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I have very low uh, AMH and finally I can have only one or two oocytes. Do you have some advanced uh, technique which will increase my chance for fertilization and high quality of embryos? So well, I think mm -hmm. I can give uh, answer to this question. Then, of course, antimalarian level is low, so mainly we get limited number of oocytes, and mostly uh, quality of oocyte is low. So what we are doing in this case, uh, of course, our main priority to try to get best embryo with such condition. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's surprising. Yeah, even with low quality of eggs, we can get better quality of embryos while we are using different sperm chip technology, time lapse technology, which we are giving less stress to uh, all site uh, and culture during the process. Uh, but mainly, of course, when antimalarian is very low, uh, and we when we have the problem with maturity. Uh, also, we have advanced technology of in vitro maturation. So when oocyte is not mature because of uh, small follicles and low antimalarial level, with additional technique, with in vitro maturation technique, we can stimulate uh, oocyte under laboratory condition and we can maturate oocyte. Then uh, we will have more chance for the uh, potential embryos. When we don't have such chance, we will get better quality of all sites, there is only two possibilities. As first is like egg donation, and second, uh, mitochondrial pronuclear transfer. Thank you. We have a question for doctor. Um, I am 28 years old. I do not plan to have children yet, but the doctor says that I have low AMH, uh, 1.2, is there a reason to get worried and to turn to IVF in the future? Вопрос врачу. Мне 28 лет. У меня пока нет планов заводить детей, но доктор говорит, что у меня низкие АМГ 1 и 2. Есть ли причина беспокоиться и обращаться, прибегать к ЭКО в будущем? Действительно, цифра 1,2 антимюллеровского гормона, уровень, говорит о том, что это низковатая для 28 лет цифра. It is true that for uh, 28 years old, the um, AMH of 1.2 is a bit low. Цифра это говорит еще о норме резерве. То есть о достаточном еще количестве яйцеклеток в запасе на сегодняшний день. Но эта цифра прогрессивно будет снижаться. Она снижается у каждой из женщин. И э, в 28 лет 1 на 2 э, говорит о том, что времени для реализации репродуктивных планов, в общем-то, не так много. Поэтому э, имеет смысл об этом задуматься. So in this case, the uh, result of 1.2 of AMH says that for now, the uh, ovarian reserve is fine. But this result is quite low for your age, which means that it will only decrease with time. 
which means that uh, now you're still in time to do something about it, but you have to think about the future and uh, in close, like in the, uh, uh, you might have not so much time to realize your reproductive plans. Что может позволить сохранить репродуктивный э, потенциал? Это заморозка ацитов и их хранение для того, чтобы когда возникнут репродуктивные планы, можно было их использовать и получить беременность. При антимюллеровском гормоне 1,2 можно сделать стандартную стимуляцию. Она позволит получить достаточное количество клеток в возрасте 28 лет. Они будут хорошего качества, что позволит их потом использовать активно. With the present level of uh, AMH, it's possible to uh, run an IVF cycle with the normal protocol. And at this age, the majority of the cells will, will be of good quality. So uh, you'll have no problem to freeze the um, biomaterial for the future use. Если не uh, реализовать идею заморозки ацитов, тогда нужно мониторировать уровень антимюллеровского гормона, и если он будет снижаться достаточно быстро, все-таки uh, рассмотреть вариант заморозки ацитов. Спасибо. If you're not ready to freeze your oocytes right away, the good idea would be to monitor the level of the uh, AMH. So uh, in case you see that it decreases rapidly, then it would be still a good idea to freeze your oocytes for the future use. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, will I have opportunity to see embryos before embryo transfer or during process? Embryology team. Hello, my name is Elena. Uh, yes, of course, you have uh, opportunity. Uh, before embryo transfer, uh, we again check embryo quality and make photo. Uh, after we put a picture in computer in a patient card. And after coming in operation room, uh, patient uh, can um, uh, see on the screen all information about yourself and can see uh, embryo, how quality uh, we make a transfer in uterus. Thank, Thank you. you. How critical, uh, sorry, can we improve the chance of success by transferring fresh or frozen embryos? Uh, I think better um, make embryo transfer frozen embryos. Uh, because uh, uh, we um, make perfectly prepare endometrium for embryo transfer. Thank you. Uh, how critical do you feel embryology laboratory air quality is affecting embryo quality? Uh, so, of course, the quality of laboratory, as we do when I present about laboratory, the one of the key points about culture condition and embryo development. So uh, mostly, uh, of course, we are investing uh, a lot for the air quality. We are using special filter systems, echo filter systems, which is protecting uh, about particulation and pathogens. We are using carbon filter systems, which is protecting our laboratory from kind of smells and chemical toxins. So all of this, uh, give us big opportunity to protect our embryos from the contamination. Uh, of course, uh, that is not uh, installed for every laboratory because this is uh, advanced technology. It is cost a lot, uh, invest a lot. But as Ivy Med Clinic, uh, we are trying to give best condition to our patients, and our laboratory uh, installed high quality of air quality system and. We are avoid all kinds of particles and pathogens that during our culture and culture system and embryo development. Thank you. Thank, thank you. We want to start IVF treatment again, but my husband will not have chance to travel and visit your clinic day of egg collection on a day of egg collection. Can he freeze a sperm sample uh, before egg collection? If he freezes sperm uh, that will 
that will affect the quality? Hello, thank you for the question. Uh, of course, he can freeze his sperm before all manipulations. Uh, nowadays, eutrophication is the advanced technology which helps patients who is not able to come at the day of IVF uh, treatment. Also, we recommend to freeze the sperm or if patients will have some long treatment, for example, chemotherapy, which give harmful influence at sperm. And uh, in this situation, cryopreservation is the best way for saving sperm with good quality before some medication. Uh, so, of course, as the case of your situation, cryopreservation of sperm is good variant for you. Uh, by the special technology of vitrification, spermatozoa will have high safety because we use modern cryomedium for vitrification and this cryomedium keeps the function of sperm cells for a very long time. And also material will be stored at the right temperature of nitrogen and we can use material when we need to. But of course, parts of spermatozoa are losing their motility after sowing, but it doesn't affect on quality of ICSI protein. Thank you. Thank you. I have several uh, IVF trials, uh, but we could not get any success. My husband had quality, uh, uh, bad quality of sperm morphology. Do you have any special technique which you can solve our problem? Uh, yes, we have special technique. Uh, one technique named uh, swim up, and the second one is based on centrifugation of sperm with a special gradient. Uh, we use swim up when uh, our sample of sperm has good indicators. The essence of the method uh, is to do centrifugation of sperm with the culture uh, medium, and after centrifugation, uh, we use this culture with the sperm for insemination and another IVF treatment. And when we have bad quality of sperm, for example, bad motility, bad concentration, or bad morphology, like in your situation, we do special gradients. And using their gradients, uh, only spermatozoa with the best motility and good morphology can pass through this gradient, uh, forming the precipitate at the bottom of uh, the tube. Uh, so uh, we will get portion of sample with high percentage of spermatozoa with good morphology and good motility. And after that, andrologist gives this sample of this uh, uh, sperm to the embryologist. And among these spermatozoa, they choose the best for making X and other IVF methods. So yes, we can solve your problem very easy. So don't worry, we can help. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, when we have uh, teratozoospermia uh, with 2% of normal sperm, is the fertilization rate with ICSI good? Hello, I will answer this question. Uh, yes, in our lab we have a special technique called as uh, microfluidic sperm sorting chip. I will tell a little bit more about this technique because it's uh, suitable for all cases with high DNA level and also for bad morphology. It's chemical free method. It's based on natural sperm selection in a passage through micro barriers, imitating natural environment of a female reproductive system. Selected spells have better morphology and um, uh, genetic quality and motility. So that's why it's recommended not only for bad sperm quality with bad morphology and also for clients, for example, with low rate of fertilization with ICSI, or poor quality embryo in the previous IVF cases. So yes, uh, it's possible for, um, for us to work with uh, such a morphology and uh, the rate of fertilization is probably is going to be good. Thank you. Thank you. I have many IVF trials and uh, egg donation cycle already, but we could not get pregnancy. I heard uh, PGD or NGS can help. Can you give me information? Do you have such technology? Do you have such technology in your laboratory? Yes, we work with uh, genetic uh, testing of embryos. We can perform either testing for a major chromosomal abnormalities with uh, PGT uh, for five or nine chromosomes or comprehensive uh, chromosomal screening, so-called NGS technique that will give us full information about uh, embryo chromosomal uh, uh, health. So it may help to select the most healthy embryo 
according to its genetics for the subsequent transfer and avoid uh, unsuccessful fertility, uh, infertility treatments. So we'll come if you look for MGSP or PGT549, you can uh, um, actually work with our IVF laboratory. Thank you. Thank you. How you avoid human factor risk for oocyte and embryo mixed up in your laboratory? Okay, I can answer this question because uh, as you saw already, we are using uh, IVF fitness system for tracking all our dishes as biological material. Uh, we put uh, chips on sperm uh, tubes, we put chips on uh, our culture dish, and uh, also with our IVF uh, witness system, we can uh, we also use like uh, second witness because I cannot change the culture dish uh, without second embryologist who will watch me. So we use like double safety uh, protocols. We use witness system and we use second witness. Thank you. What is the normal time period for which uh, vitrification is done for sperms in the IVF lab? Uh, is there any standard time period? Um, uh, thank you for your question. Yes, scientists have not yet determined the exact period of time uh, of sperm viability during cryoconservation. However, in medical practice, there have been several cases we storage them more than 25 years. And today is the longest term for sperm freezing, which ended the healthy, with healthy pregnancy is 28 years. So modern protectants allow spermatozoa to maintain their, uh, their functionally characteristic even after a long stay in cryo storage. Vitrification is absolutely the safe method uh, of freezing male uh, gametes. So keeping the material in cryo bank does not uh, absolutely affect the sperm. And through the entire storage period, uh, the optimal condition for freezing maintained. So sperm can be stored as much as the clients need. Uh, there are no time limits. It's possible to store your own uh, reproductive material in the clinic, uh, clinic IVMED, which will provide opportunity to become a father in any age and regardless of circumstances. So. Thank you. Thank you. I had my own stimulation several times, but we received a few cells and there were only two embryos. What would you advise? Uh, maybe I should do IVF with Creo cells? Uh, question to doctor. Я переведу. У меня была собственная стимуляция несколько раз, но мы получили всего несколько клеток и только два эмбриона. Что вы посоветуете? Возможно, мне следует сделать эко с крио замороженными клетками. Действительно, что можно делать в такой ситуации? Особенности эмбриологии у человека таковы, что не каждый а ацит даст эмбрион, способный дать имплантацию, то есть дорастет до бластоциста. It's really an issue that not, not every uh, human uh, oocyte is able to, to provide the uh, healthy development of the embryo uh, up to the blastocyst stadium. Чем меньше ацитов получено на пункции, тем меньше вероятность, что uh, на перенос будет хороший качественный эмбрион. The less oocytes you, you receive uh, as a result of the stimulation, the less is the probability that you will receive embryos for transfer. Соответственно, повысить шансы для того, чтобы иметь большее количество эмбрионов, может большее количество яйцеклеток, полученных э, на пункции или пункциях. И если мы не можем получить большое количество ацитов э, в одну пункцию, можно обсуждать накопление ацитов, не оплодотворять их сразу одновременно, а несколько стимуляций, функций э, позволит накопить достаточное количество. Which is why the more cells you receive in the IVF cycle, 
the higher are your chances to receive good embryos for, th for the transfer. So uh, in your case, if you cannot receive uh, enough uh, cells for uh, creating the embryos, the good idea would be to, uh, to freeze the cells that you receive and to uh, run several IVF cycles and to accumulate the um, a higher amount of uh, cells and then to fertilize them all together. Когда будет накоплено достаточное количество яйцеклеток, одновременно можно их оплодотворить, откультивировать, и это даст больше шансов иметь большее количество качественных эмбрионов. Спасибо. When you have the uh, sufficient amount of the uh, cells, then uh, it is possible to uh, fertilize them all together, to cultivate them up to the blastocyst stadium, and then you have a higher chance of having good embryos for the transfer. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a time limit on uh, how long embryos, um, embryos or gametes can be frozen for Christian to embryologists? Yeah, I can answer on this question. Uh, if you have your biomaterial in our IVMED laboratory, it doesn't matter if it's sperm or eggs or embryos, it doesn't matter how long time it's uh, keep in our cryo storage. It can be like 10 years, 20 years, it doesn't matter. Uh, in our clinic we have like very modern um, cry cryo storage and it can keep like uh, as long as you want. And you can be sure that your biomaterial will be in safety and you can sleep well. Thank you. Thank you. What's the sperm preparation technique for IV med? Uh, do you have some special technique for sperm preparation? Thank you for your question. Uh, of course, the choice of technique for semen preparation strictly depends on quality of the sperm. So if you have the sample with normal count, maturity and morphology, we usually use uh, sperm washing or swim up method. By contrast with the bad quality sample, we usually prefer identity gradient centrifugation. We usually use it for poor characteristic samples. It helps us to clean the semen after semen, uh, from the seminal plasm and the round cells to decrease the number of immatile sperm and uh, get a great number of motile. Uh, so each technique can be changed and improved or improved with the sample changes. And also I already told about the special method of preparation uh, called as like microfluidic sperm sorting chip. I'm not going to repeat because you can see our record, but it's also uh, a good method for preparation. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to join Ivy Med Guarantee Program for surrogacy. My husband has no azorma uh, no spermia, but um, 65% of sperm DNA uh, fragmentation. Do we have chance to join this program? Uh, what is the best technique uh, can help for the high sperm DNA fragmentation? So for the question, uh, of course, we are detecting a large amount, uh, when we are detecting a large amount of sperm uh, with high level of DNA fragmentation, we recommend to use sperm chip method. Uh, sperm chip helps us to avoid damaged cells by different factors, uh, for example, rust, reactive oxygen species, and DNA fragmentation also. Uh, this method is based on the passage of sperm through special canals, and spermatozoa with uh, the best quality uh, will pass to finish line faster. Uh, and in this way, sperm chip allows us to select spermatozoa with the best progressive motility and with the normal level of DNA fragmentation for ICT and without uh, reactive oxygen species. So yes, we will have changes because we use the best methods uh, which helps you get good results. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I read uh, that PGD24 tests um, come back as false negative because of unlucky cell selection for a test. Later, the embryos often correct themselves and turn out normal. Uh, how reliable is the PGD24 result? Can it be better to do a PGD5? Is this case test 4 or 5 will rule out the major abnormalities and give us gender? Amnia later will rule out the other problems. Embryologist maybe can say something. Uh, well, uh, talking about uh, PGT, it's always better to know more. 
where basically a PGT was uh, designed to avoid all the possible complications of the subsequent uh, uh, pregnancy that can be established after embryo transfer. That is why if we talk about uh, inf information, it is always better to do PGT for 24 chromosomes or NGS. Because actually you can select the wrong cells for PGT for five chromosomes and also for PGT for 24 chromosomes. And there is no really uh, strong evidence that tell us that uh, embryos are able to correct major chromosome abnormalities. So of course, as any other genetic tests, there are risk of false negative or false positive uh, result for PGT of any kind, but this risk is very low. It's like less than 2% close to one. That's why if you want to know more, it's better to do PGT24. But of course, if you are young and you don't have a very strong indications for genetic testing of embryos, you can go for PGT5 and actually screen your pregnancy very, very thoroughly. Thank you. Can I add uh, a little bit to this answer? Like, uh, uh, if you're asking that the result was bad, and you probably think it was bad quality of cells that we take during the biopsy, we actually have very good uh, communication with our genetic lab who perform uh, NGS, like PGD24 and PGD5. So we actually always knew uh, what problem was this? Is it the problem with uh, cell quality or it just really bad result? So we can actually be really sure uh, what result we give for you. So it's uh, really important to have good communication with genetic and to understand uh, what uh, to propose for a patient and uh, like how to explain the result. Yes, thank you. Thank you. What is your criteria for, don for donor egg freezing? If I choose a donor egg from your bank, will I have high chance for good quality of embryos? The last question. Okay. Um, <laughs> as I say, uh, we have a really high survival rate about all site freezing. It doesn't matter quality of all site, but when we are working for donor egg bank, of course we have strict criteria which we are choosing to do freezing and to cryobanking. Firstly, we have to analyze loci by assessment, uh, high quality of morphology, and of course, we are checking a different stage of the morphology. We are checking quality of polar body, we are checking quality of cytoplasmic activity, uh, also quality of pervitalin space. So, till to freezing, loci is present many different process, uh, strict criteria for the uh, vitrification process. I mean, our aim is not only to catch survival rate, but we want to create with this frozen oocyte high quality of embryos and, of course, in the first attempt pregnancy. So this is our main aim. That's why we are choosing under special criteria uh, which we freeze oocyte. And soon we will add the advanced technology of the spindle wheel. With spindle wheel, we will have the chance also uh, to get uh, myotic spindle maturity of the oocyte and that will increase much more the chance of high quality of embryos after the towing process. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, that was the last question for today. If you have more questions, please send us these questions to our uh, clinic mail and we will uh, answer them. Um, thank you, Birol. Uh, Thanks to embryological team and Dr. Veronika. Um, see you next Friday on our webinar, which will be dedicated to, to problem of um, egg donation programs. And we will tell you more about uh, program options at Medical Center IVMED. So uh, see you next week. Stay healthy, stay safe. Bye.